Hello, I'm Cheryl Allen, a proud University of Utah alum, and I am here in Uinta, Utah, which is adjacent to Ogden, Utah, with Britt Welch, who is with Beehive Cheese. This is a family-owned business with Britt and his father, Tim, Tim, a proud, also, University of Utah alum. Tell us a little bit about the history of this wonderful little shop and your company, uh, some of your products. Um, we are very anxious to know more. Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. So Beehive Cheese, we started back in 2005. My father had a history and a degree in finance, so he spent a lot of time as a project developer at a software company. So my uncle, who co-founded Beehive Cheese with my father, started the company as well in 2005 with a background in real estate. So of course, the natural things to do with a background in finance and real estate respectively is to start making artisan cheese. So again, 2005, they got this harebrained idea to quit their big kid jobs and start pursuing their passion, which was making artisan food. So here we are all these years later, um, we're proud to be a second generation artisan creamery. We have a wonderful team of a little over 50 people and it's incredible to see our cheese across the country and across the world. Well, we are in the midst of this wonderful little shop with of course the production facilities nearby. Tell us a little bit about some of your products that you have here and over there in the cooler. We're anxious to know more. Yeah, certainly. So the first thing that we realized early on is we knew very little about making artisan cheese. Well, finance, real estate, and my actually background in the life sciences, that is really useful for general kind of learning and problem solving. The technical aspects of artisan cheese making, when we started Beehive Cheese, Tim and Pat had eight days between the two of them of artisan cheese making experience. So the first thing we did is we found some experts. So the University of Utah is incredible and we also were able to partner with Utah State University, who is one of the foremost ag and cheese making experts in the country. So we had an opportunity to talk with them. They taught us the basic ins and outs of cheese making and helped us design our creamery. So in going through, they helped us a lot. And as kind of the final gift of their project, they approached us and asked if we would commercialize one of their recipes. So the beautiful thing about Beehive Cheese is we have local milk, where our milk is sourced about 15 miles away from our creamery a local company, but also the recipe itself was developed here in Utah by Utah Ag Scientists. So very true to our state and in line with what makes Utah special. Well, you certainly add to the special nature of Utah. Uh, this shop is absolutely charming, but if I live in Las Vegas, which I, I do not, I'm just down the road a piece, but how would I find out about your product how would I get some of these quality cheeses in my home? So the wonderful thing, we do have our small retail shop here in Uinta, right at the southern edge of Ogden, but you can find our cheese in distribution. Harmon's, Smith's, um, the associated foods like Fresh Market will carry our cheese across the state. You can find it at like Tony Caputo's or other artisan markets. Um, but the great thing too is there's been a really big resurgence of love, the love of artisan cheese across the country over the last few years. Yes. And it's almost as easy to find our cheese in New York City as it is in Utah. So that's the beautiful thing, just the community that we've had come embrace our cheese has been truly humbling, but also incredible, just people who love good food. So can I Google and find out my nearest location? Yes, and actually um, the time we're doing this tour, we have the holidays coming up. So we have a website, beehivecheese.com, and we can do gifts all across the country as well. So a lot of folks think of like candied popcorn or chocolate during the holidays, and I think people have a tendency of getting over sugar. So cheese makes a really nice complement to holiday gift giving. If I bought this large block, what is it refrigerated? Tell me how to store it. Yeah, so, so cheese needs to be refrigerated, but the beautiful thing about it is we start with milk, which is very perishable. I mean, milk will only last a few weeks in your fridge before it's, it's done. So the cheese making process, we're gonna go through and look through it today, but it's a process of acidification or introducing cheese cultures to ferment the milk and also dehydration. So we're gonna press it and extract some of the water out of it. And those two processes lead to a very Shelf stable product, this does need to be refrigerated, but it'll last up to a year, two years even, that cheese just gets better and better as it ages. Did you hear that? It gets better and better as it ages. So it's one of those things you can 
buy in bulk and keep. Definitely. One thing I will say is fridges can be really hard on cheese once it's opened. Uh -huh. So if you do get cheese and open it, you need to wrap it really carefully, keep oxygen off of it. If I want to experiment with cheeses, is there a good place to go to get information on uh, the tang or flavor of cheeses? Yeah, definitely. So what I would say, and this is very intimidating because typically <laughs> we go to grocery stores and we have our list and we get our list and then we go home. Cheese mongers are the most amazing thing in the world. Cheese mongers. So the cheese monger, that's the person that works behind the counter, behind that intimidating cheese island. So that being said, if you go to the cheese island and you're not accustomed to it, that thing is very intimidating. You're like, why is this one moldy? Why is this one blue? Why is this one green? So that being said, cheesemongers are very friendly and they are professionally trained to teach people about cheese. So even just a simple question, Hi, I like cheese and crackers. Would you tell me a soft cheese? They can kind of initiate you and help you through some like entry level cheese. The beautiful thing about Beehive Cheese is these um, Utah cheddars we're doing. They're very smooth and creamy, a very good introductory cheese as well. Not some of like the uh, more exotic cheeses that'll kind of kick you in the face when you eat them. Excellent suggestion. What is Britt Welch's favorite cheese? Do you have one? <sighs> So my favorite cheese depends on what's for dinner because you can kind of, by having different things you eat it with, and that being said, some cheeses are sometimes amazing, like exceptional. But overall, I love like the sweet English style blues, like an English Stilton. Um, our own cheddar is really good, and I'm not just saying that, but um, across the board, it's incredible. And also like the soft ripened French style cheeses can be really good as well. Well, you've got us quite excited. Let's go in and look at some of your production facilities, unless there's something else you'd like to share. Let, let's dive in. Thank you. All right. Britt, we're here in your production facility, yep. Yep. right next to these cheese vats, and one's a little lower than the other. Beautiful, shiny. Uh, that for making cheese. Tell us a little bit about your production process and what as customers you'd like us to know. Yeah, definitely. So the key to artisan cheese making is first you need to start with good milk. So first and foremost, we were very selective in choosing a dairy partner to work with. Uh, we've chosen to work with the Wade's family dairy. So they are a fourth generation family farm out in, Ute in uh, Ogden, Utah. So we work with them and we will receive milk from them about six hours before we make cheese. So as we're making cheese when we're done, the milk will have been out of the cow for about 12 hours when it's made into cheese. And again, that's key in preserving the freshness and the cleanness of the milk, which then corresponds to the cleanness in the final cheese. So we'll start and as you can tell, we're all geared up. Um, food safety is very important to us. So we're always washing our hands, making sure the vats are really well cleaned. And sanitizing our feet, I might say. Exactly. Have a little alcohol spray that goes on the feet and keeps us all clean. Um, one key thing to understand, too, is milk is the perfect food. So it has everything in it that uh, mama cow needs, needs to raise her baby. All of the fat, protein, water, everything. That being said, though, it's also the perfect environment for pathogens and bad microbes to grow in. So the first thing we'll do in the morning is we pasteurize our milk. This cooks the milk to 160 degrees for about 15 seconds and kills all the pathogenic bacteria in it. Since that happens, we're left with a blank slate. So what we add after that is a special cocktail of artisan cheese cultures. These cheese cultures will add in and they'll get to work eating all of the lactose or sugar in the milk and turning it into lactic acid. So that's the process that's going to allow cheese to age out and develop a lot of flavor. The next thing we add is an enzyme called rennet. So little Miss Muppet sat on her tuppet eating her curds and whey. So the curds are all of the solid, all the good stuff in the milk, all the protein. We have fat, butter, all of the good stuff in the milk. And then the rest is the whey, which is about 90% of the milk, which is the water and some of the sugar. So what we will do is add the rennet and it's the most fascinating change. So we start with liquid milk, like you'd see on your, you'd put on your cereal. We let the rennet sit in there, cook it a little bit, and after 30 minutes, it's gone through a total change. So the milk at the end is almost like a yogurt, so it coagulates. What we'll do then is run our cheese harps through it and cut them into quarter inch little cheese curds. 
So those start out very soft, almost like a soup, but as we cook it and gently stir it, those harden up into almost like little tiny noodles. So again, we start with milk. 30 minutes later, we have the curds floating around in yellow whey. So we're going to go through all of the processes again of cheese making in order to get all of the water out of it so it can age longer. We will drain it. So that's where this finishing table comes in. It'll start full with the curds just stirring around in it. We'll drain all of the way out outside and that'll be taken away and fed to pigs and have and, other. And this process takes how, approximately how long? Start to finish, it'll take about four hours. So the cheese making process takes four hours and one day we'll make four batches of cheese. So we start at about two o'clock in the morning, and we'll end at 10 o'clock at night. So it's a full time job that we have a couple shifts of, of cheese makers. So when we have it in here, we'll drain all the way out and be left with a small carpet of curds in the bottom of the vat in order to essentially create a bacteria day spa. So we've got all the little cheese cultures in there and they're very happy turning the milk into cheese. So the next step is we'll take those big slabs, chop them up into finger-sized cheddar cheese curds that you think of just when you eat cheese curds, like a fresh curd about the size of a small mozzarella stick. And then we'll scoop those with a shovel into our presses and press those into the rounds of cheese that we'll taste later. So cheese again, everything we've done there has created a really good environment. If you start with any defects in the cheese, as you age it, those defects become more pronounced. So if you start with a little bit of bitterness, an aged cheese will be very bitter. However, if you start with a really good, clean, stable cheese, as it ages, it develops savoriness, nuttiness, and just makes this amazing cheddar-style cheese that we'll be trying later. Okay, very specifically, where in the process is do you add the different flavors for the different types of cheese? You have some marvelous cheeses. We'll talk about those in a minute, but where in the process does that occur? So the flavor is added on day one, right after it comes out of our cheese press, it'll be that formed 20 pound wheel. That's when we'll apply a really light oil to get the binder, to act as a binder to get the flavors to stick. And day one, we'll rub the, the uh, coffee or Cajun seasoning or honey onto the wheel of cheese at day one. Or bourbon, tell us a little bit about that cheese. Or bourbon, so of course, being a very respectable Utah company, we put only the most wholesome things in our cheese, like coffee and tea and whiskey. So <laughs> our most recent cheese that we've rolled out that's very incredible is called Pour Me A Slice. So this cheese is marinated in a Kentucky straight bourbon, a Basil Hayden top shelf bourbon. So we'll put in about a triple shot of whiskey into the wheel of cheese. So as it ages, it absorbs the whiskey and the aromatics, and it provides really nice warm vanilla spice notes to the final cheese. So okay. fun pairing. I'm gonna repeat that name, pour me a slice. Uh, <laughs> so look for that. Uh, it sounds like a great holiday gift. It's a phenomenal kind of just event cheese. I am in cheese heaven, actually heaven, period. <laughs> Tasting these cheeses, they're marvelous. But Britt, I wanted to ask you a question because we just visited the cheese aging room, which was chilled as, and you mentioned there's two different temperatures. We came out, there was a very large truck getting loaded for holiday deliveries. And you mentioned your two biggest catalog retailers that carry your product called Beehive Cheese. They don't chase the name. Correct. Tell us about those two, where we can go if, if, if we're used to catalogs like yeah. I am yeah, and order your product. So our two biggest customers as far as like seasonal holiday gifting are Williams Sonoma and Harry and David. So you can go on their websites and find all sorts of really cool, like diverse cheese offerings, not only with local Utah cheese, but also lots of other curated, amazing products that Williams Sonoma does such a good job with. So with and, that- And Harry and David? Yeah, Harry and David as well. So I think that's very important for you to know if, if you don't live nearby, how easy ordering this product and you do look for beehive cheese and it's very prominent and this is absolutely just delicious. Now I also want to mention one other thing. This location for Utah's many skiers is at the mouth of uh, going up Weaver Canyon to Snow Basin. And I asked uh, Britt if he got ski customers coming and going 
and uh, tell, tell us what you said about that. So yeah, the funny thing, so we have a small, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a small retail shop here. Before, we were just making cheese here. One day we got on the local news, I think we were in the Standard Examiner in Ogden, and folks just started showing up to our office, like, hey, we'd like to buy cheese, we saw you in the paper. So it's funny, now we have a small shop here and yeah, we get lots of skiers here, lots of folks picking up uh, cheese curds. So we have a little punch pass that every time you get a certain number of cheese curds, you get a free curd. Tell us a little bit about how you adjusted to COVID and the challenges that we have. Yeah, COVID. definitely. And I'm going to keep snacking. Indulge. So COVID-19, I think, was really difficult for everybody. There were things that I think we had taken for granted, simple things like the ability to go out and be with other people, that all of a sudden at the beginning of the pandemic, there was a lot of uncertainty and a lot of nervousness, and we didn't know if the world was going to end. So that being said, as far as our business went, that April and March were dead for us. Normally we get a certain number of orders every month in order to keep our place running and all of our orders fell off. In fact, we had a lot of distributors that took large pallets of cheese on their trucks. The pallets made it to their warehouse and they called up and said, hey, we don't want this anymore, come take it back. So we had to go actually go out and not only did we not have any sales, but sales we currently had were like reversed. So that was very difficult. Being a business owner and really being a steward for 50 people's lives, many families' lives, um, we take that very seriously. So we sat down, a lot of this was just over phone calls because we didn't know if we were supposed to come to the office. And we decided, okay, what's important to us? So we started with our core values in mind. And we realized very early on, we need to take care of our people. Our people are super important to us. We have faith that this pandemic will pass, but we need our team intact when we get through this. So effective, I had an opportunity to meet with every individual employee, and as a company, all of us from top to bottom took a 25% pay cut. Just because we didn't know what the future would bring. We didn't have sales, we didn't know what the future would bring, we took a 25% pay cut. The hourly folks took a 25% reduction in their hours. And the second thing we realized early on is we have to stay in business. So we went through, just combed through our entire business and anything we could save, we did. If we had a little bit of stuff here, we sold it. Um, and we did everything we could. And then the blessing for us, um, just being scrappy and being dynamic, after about six weeks of really just being lean, um, the floodgates opened. We had some really cool opportunities open up. We went out, we asked for help from, from um, our communities and they answered and people bought cheese in small amounts, in large amounts. And about six or seven weeks after, I'm proud to say that we moved into working overtime for our hourly folks. And then within a few months, we were able to kind of get back to the stream of things. And I'm glad we did because right now it's really hard to keep up. And if we would have lost any of our people, it, it wouldn't have been possible. So we have a really solid team here. COVID-19 was not easy, but hard work and teamwork, we were able to get through, which is well, cool. That's a tender story. What I can tell you today is this is a marvelous product. Um, how many different cheeses do you produce? Yeah, so we do really two different styles of cheese. We'll have our fresh cheese curds that you tried here that are aged really only about a week. And then we have our aged cheddar style cheese. So this cheese, however, we'll take and we'll rub the outside in the beautiful rinds that we talked about earlier but we have about a dozen flavors. Three or four of them are very commonly available in grocery stores. So with that being said, what I'd love to do is walk us through a quick vertical tasting, just kind of talking about how cheese develops flavor with time and kind of what's going on here. So this first one we're trying here is our cheese curd. So as cheese ages, it develops more flavor. So milk does not have a lot of flavor. It's lacking in savory. It's lacking in a lot of the aromas that make cheese distinct. That's because the, the, uh, the compounds in the milk, so those proteins, butter, all of that, hasn't broken down yet. So these cheese curds, what you'll taste. Isn't that marvelous? You get a little bit of salt, sweetness from the milk, and then it squeaks. So do you know why it squeaks? No, I've always wondered that, please tell. So there's protein in there, excuse me. So there's protein in there and all of the proteins are almost like little ukulele strings. So what's happening is as you're chewing into the cheese, you're snapping those little ukulele strings, which cause the little squeak, 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 squeak. What's going to happen, however, 
is as the cheese ages, the enzymes and the bacteria, the cheese cultures in there, are going to break down those proteins and you get a much smoother texture as the proteins are broken down. So when you try it, instead of getting a squeaky kind of ukulele string structure of the protein, this cheese, all the proteins are nicely dissolved into a homogeneous paste. I noticed mm -hmm. you enjoyed the <laughs> That's Then this Before is a habit. The taste. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, if you were going to go through all the work of procuring the best milk in the state, if we're going to go through all of this work of making it by hand and then aging it, really the reason we're doing that is for flavor and aroma. So if you've ever had a cold and you try to enjoy some soup or something, you don't taste it. That's because so much of the flavor and food experience is that aroma. So the beautiful thing is the cheese ages. It's chopping up those proteins into little bitty pieces that you can then smell. The longer it ages, the smaller the pieces get and the more aromas are released. So this is our promontory, our base cheese. Produces some really nice butter aromas to it, getting some nice savory as well but overall a very well-balanced cheese. Also one thing, so if anybody's a really nice like wine aficionado, if you were to get a really nice bottle of red wine and put it in the freezer for 20 minutes before you enjoy it, you'd take it out, it would be ice cold and it wouldn't have any smell, it wouldn't have any aroma. It's because all the volatiles, all those aroma causing components are stuck inside of the liquid. That being said though, if you were to warm it up to room temperature, put it in your glass and then swirl it around, that opens up the aroma, same thing with cheese. So what you see, what you see with a lot of folks um, that are very experienced with cheese tasting is they'll actually take the cheese and play with it and play with their food a little bit. So the warmth of my hand, as well as the physical agitation of the cheese, it's a totally different experience afterward. And you'll look really funny at a party when you start handling the cheese, <laughs> but then they'll try it and be like, oh yeah, it does taste better that way. Well, some of low. us are used to looking funny at a party regardless. There, there you so. go, just be the center of attention. <laughs> So there's kind of a little nutshell cheese tasting. And then the one thing I would like to taste before we get to the end would be our Barely Buzzed, which has the coffee and lavender on the rind. So as the cheese ages, it infuses those aromas and flavors into the paste. So some folks ask, okay, can you eat the rind of cheeses? And there are definitely cheeses you do not want to eat the rind. Um, it could be wax or it could be a really gnarly mold. But with Barely Buzzed, the rind on this is coffee. So that's probably the, everybody's favorite part. So there's coffee in there, also a little bit of lavender. So the crazy thing about this one, I've done the farmer's market for years. You'll talk with folks and they'll say, oh, that's interesting, what's in it? Nobody can tell it has coffee. Everybody loves it and enjoys it. Honestly, I get more notes of like roast beef and just savory, big, bold flavor. But once you tell them the coffee, there's coffee in there, they're like, oh, and it's just, fun how the flavors really come together. Britt, is there anything else you'd like to tell our listeners today and our viewers? Yeah, definitely. So the last 15 years have been kind of a wild ride for my family. It's really fun now. Um, I get the opportunity to come to work every day and work with a bunch of folks who I'm very close to and many of them who I'm related to. But about three or four years ago, we were 10 years into Beehive Cheese and we were at, sitting around the dinner table. It was a beautiful time of the year right now, autumn leaves outside. And we just began reminiscing, what, what's been our favorite thing about this crazy cheese journey? And without deviation, all of us came to the same conclusion that it's the people we've met. Cheesemakers, be it in Utah or across the country, are wonderful people. Other craft winemakers, chocolatiers, you have an opportunity to find people who truly love their craft. And it was that day around the dinner table that we came up with kind of our beehive cheese tagline and slogan of making friends with cheese. And it's just been so much fun sharing this cheese making experience with everybody and learning more and producing a fun thing we can share together. Making friends with cheese. That is a really great tagline. And that's what we've done today with the University of Utah business family, Beehive Cheese. And let me remind our listeners that Williams Sonoma, if you live a distance away, uh, Harry and David's uh, 
You mentioned many of the markets in Utah. Look for the Beehive Cheese label. These are marvelous. It's a great way to make friends and a great way to support University of Utah business, which is also very important. Marvelous company, marvelous product. Thank you for the time you spent with us. Beehive Cheese. Thanks so Go much, use. Cheryl.